Hello, my name's Michael Keneally and this video is about the benefits of joining together Eastern Astrology and Western Astrology, or Vedic Astrology as it's called, and Western Astrology. Basically Vedic Astrology provides the most magnificent and utterly vast statement of our incarnational life purpose. You know, why we're here, what circumstances will attract at birth, how the energies will unfold, what our scripts are. Western astrology is psychodynamic, you know, when done well these days. And so, for example, we look at how these energies and scripts express themselves in our egoic psychology. And how indeed our psychology unfolds in the process of individuation, of getting to know the different parts of ourselves. And so it encompasses psychosynthesis, picking out and identifying our sub-personalities as expressed by the energies defined by the planets. And of course, transforming them. And indeed, in my readings and my courses, I also use a branch of Western astrology called evolutionary astrology, which shows how the effects of past lives creates a life purpose for us, expressed and experienced psychologically, and how the energy of certain planets can have a particular role and purpose in this life, but again, it's understood psychologically. So you might ask, well, why combine them? Well, the whole point is you, in my opinion, can't do successful astrology unless you combine Vedic and Western astrology. For example, Western astrology incorporates the gods of change, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and the wounded healer Chiron. These have entered the... The, the, you know, the human consciousness at recent dates, humanity's evolution demands that we understand how these gods of change manifest in our destiny and at times in our life. But it's part really of a bigger picture that I want you to consider. It's about the whole role of East meeting West and what the sort of differences are and how now I believe humanity is actually called, if you like, to enter the age of Aquarius and to communicate and how wonderful the internet is. I mean, I have students in so many different countries. I, every day I talk to people in half a dozen different countries. Every day I do readings to people in different continents because of the internet that, you know, that wouldn't have been possible 10 years ago. It wasn't really much possible four years ago, maybe. So, humanity is sharing. Now, there's lots of dangers around that could destroy that. And we had terrible energies signified by the planets in 2016. The transiting Saturn-Mars conjunction, which brought endless stress. The jupiter Rahu or the Jupiter-North Node conjunction, which caused the possibility of darkness and the Kalsapa Yoga, which of course will come back to us at times, which is so divisive. And all three of those happened in 2016, and look what happened politically. But let's look at the bigger picture. You see, East met West in a very big way with the rise of Greek thought, Greek philosophy. And of course, the Greeks had to defend themselves against the absolutism of the Persian Empire. And so, in a sense, that's when we can first see that dichotomy. So you had Western individualism and Western rationalism and philosophy on one side of the war, and on the other side, the, the vastness of, you know, Eastern perception, which didn't really value the individual. 
And indeed, of course, there are whole issues about, you know, that we shouldn't overvalue our individual self because at one level it is an illusion, because there is the vastness. But it's important to understand both. And East met West, the individualism of the Greek city-states and the, what's the word, the, the totalizing Persian Empire. And so, of course, a, few, a handful of Spartans nobly stood up and saved Europe, saved the intellectual heritage of Europe. Well, what happened next in Europe? OK, the Romans took over Greece. They sort of said, oh, yes, we value Greek philosophy and teaching. Greeks became favoured tutors. But, of course, the Romans were imperialists. They stamped the Roman Empire, one size fits all, everywhere, like a big corporation. And then, of course, they decayed. They fell apart. So that at the end of the 4th century, Rome was waiting for the barbarians. Rome had given way to vice and luxury. It was using mercenary soldiers to defend its huge borders. You know, it was built on oppression and slavery. Julius Caesar personally seized into slavery millions of slaves and sold them from northern Europe. But what happened? In 410, the Rhine froze over. The Huns, the Visigoths and the Vandals crossed the Rhine. They headed down to Rome and they burned the city. Rome fell. The Dark Ages started. In a sense, it was taken over the banner of Rome by the Roman Catholic Church. But that didn't encourage genuine authenticity and the philosophical supremacy of the great Athenian philosophers. It was so much dulled down and controlled, learning by precedence, you know, sort of stupid academic methods. And so the Dark Ages happened. Of course, during the Dark Ages, for a brief time in Britain, Arthur arose. And Arthur you know, represents sacred kingship. He was guided by Merlin, who held the ancient Celtic druid wisdom. But he only held the Saxons at bay for so long. And so the Dark Ages held. But the next thing we come to is the Enlightenment in Europe. Now the Enlightenment... Oh, I'm so sorry, I've missed out the Renaissance. Basically, Islamic forces... Um, overthrew Byzantium. Scholars escaped to Rome. I think it was 1485. And so, of course, the West received, you know, the, the learning of the ancient Greeks. But it didn't perhaps come to a full flowering until the Enlightenment. But that was very cerebral. And it lacked the spiritual dimensions, for example, of Indian thought. And so humanity and the West progressed to its present point. And yes, unfortunately, the British Empire stamped down in a way on India, but West and East communication was opened. And now we are in this very special moment when we can combine, we can receive the immense divine message of Eastern thought and Eastern astrology. But it does need to have brought to it also Western individualism, Western thought. You see, so, uh, you know, the East has the guru method of transmission of learning, but that can be so disempowering. It doesn't necessarily help the student become who they were meant to be. And so often they can start, you know, start wearing saris and so forth, or, you know, say, I am, you know, you can take on another identity, but it's not authentic. So what I'm saying is, we now have the opportunity for respectful sharing of East and West. And that is one of the great principles that I think underlie my courses and readings, because I do combine both astrologies, if you wish to. So have a look at my courses website, www.mastervedicastrology.com and www.enlightenedastrologycourse.com.
or have a look at my readings website, www.starwheelastrology.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.